How many different kinds of insects are there? More than 980,000 species of arthropods exist, and most of those are insects. Estimates vary, but some scientists believe there are around 900,000 known species of insects. And many more species are yet to be discovered. Some experts believe there may be as many as 10 million different kinds of insects. What is a caiman? A caiman, also spelled caiman, is a close relative of the alligator that can be found in Central and South America. Like their crocodilian cousins, caimans live near rivers and other bodies of water. Most caimans are around 6 or 7 feet, 2 meters, long, but the largest species. The black caiman, can grow to a length of 15 feet, 4.5 meters. How far can birds fly? Some birds go very short distances in their migrations. The blue grouse, for example, lives in the mountains in North America and flies less than a mile down to lower. Warmer altitudes for the winter months. That's one extreme. Another extreme are the long distance flyers like the Arctic terns. These birds hold the distance record for flight, they've been known to fly from their summer home in the Arctic to a winter spot in the Antarctic, covering distances of around 10,000 miles, 16,100 kilometers. And in the spring they go back the other way. The long-tailed Jaeger flies more than 5,000 miles. 8,050 kilometers, in each direction of its migratory flight. And even the tiny barn swallow has been known to cover 6,000 miles, 9,660 kilometers, round trip. How far can birds fly? Some birds go very short distances in their migrations. The blue grouse, for example, lives in the mountains in North America and flies less than a mile down to lower. Warmer altitudes for the winter months. That's one extreme. Another extreme are the long distance flyers like the Arctic terns. These birds hold the distance record for flight, they've been known to fly from their summer home in the Arctic to a winter spot in the Antarctic, covering distances of around 10,000 miles, 16,100 kilometers. And in the spring they go back the other way. The long-tailed Jaeger flies more than 5,000 miles. 8,050 kilometers, in each direction of its migratory flight. And even the tiny barn swallow has been known to cover 6,000 miles, 9,660 kilometers, round trip.
Why do birds migrate? Many species of birds spend part of the year the warmer months in northern regions. And then migrate south when the weather starts to get cold. Birds follow this southward path primarily in search of an abundant, accessible food supply. Birds use up the energy they get from food very quickly, and they need to eat often. So when the ground begins to freeze and food supplies, particularly insects, are harder to find, many birds head south. Birds that spend a lot of time in water ducks and geese, for example have an additional reason to migrate. The northern lakes and ponds where they lie freeze over in the winter. Migrating birds spend the winter months in the warmer, southern climate. And as spring returns to the north, so do migrating birds. Why do birds migrate? Many species of birds spend part of the year the warmer months in northern regions. And then migrate south when the weather starts to get cold. Birds follow this southward path primarily in search of an abundant, accessible food supply. Birds use up the energy they get from food very quickly, and they need to eat often. So when the ground begins to freeze and food supplies, particularly insects, are harder to find, many birds head south. Birds that spend a lot of time in water ducks and geese, for example have an additional reason to migrate. The northern lakes and ponds where they lie freeze over in the winter. Migrating birds spend the winter months in the warmer, southern climate. And as spring returns to the north, so do migrating birds. How do birds know when it's time to migrate? Scientists believe that in some species, young migrating birds learn when and how to migrate from the older birds in the flock. Experts have also noted that changes in the temperature and amount of daylight seem to trigger a migrating impulse in birds. As the days get shorter and the amount of sunlight decreases in the autumn, Migrating birds begin to produce hormones. These hormones cause the birds to store up more fat in their bodies. Fat that can be converted into energy to help sustain them on their long flights. As the time for migrating approaches, birds display signs of restlessness. Some people have even observed such restlessness among captive birds, which have a steady food supply and little contact with outside temperatures and sunlight. How do birds know when it's time to migrate? Scientists believe that in some species, young migrating birds learn when and how to migrate from the older birds in the flock. Experts have also noted that changes in the temperature and 
amount of daylight seem to trigger a migrating impulse in birds. As the days get shorter and the amount of sunlight decreases in the autumn, migrating birds begin to produce hormones. These hormones cause the birds to store up more fat in their bodies. Fat that can be converted into energy to help sustain them on their long flights. As the time for migrating approaches, birds display signs of restlessness. Some people have even observed such restlessness among captive birds. Which have a steady food supply and little contact with outside temperatures and sunlight. How do migrating birds know how to navigate? Twice a year, migrating birds vacate their homes to travel hundreds and sometimes thousands of miles over land and over sea to a new residence. Some migratory birds travel to the same exact place year after year. And some are even so punctual as to arrive at the same time year after year. How do migrating birds know how to navigate? Twice a year, migrating birds vacate their homes to travel hundreds and sometimes thousands of miles over land and over sea to a new residence. Some migratory birds travel to the same exact place year after year. And some are even so punctual as to arrive at the same time year after year. How do they know how to do that? Scientists have studied migratory patterns of many different species. And they have developed theories as to how birds can find their way, but ultimately, they don't know for sure what techniques birds use. Birds might use the stars and the moon to guide their way, or they may have a sort of internal compass that helps them detect Earth's magnetic field, thereby showing them which way is north. Some birds may also be able to detect low-level sounds made by ocean waves. Sounds that can provide clues about direction. Perhaps many birds are capable of using more than one navigational technique. If not, the birds that use the stars to find their way would be lost on cloudy nights. How do they know how to do that? Scientists have studied migratory patterns of many different species. And they have developed theories as to how birds can find their way, but ultimately, they don't know for sure what techniques birds use. Birds might use the stars and the moon to guide their way, or they may have a sort of internal compass that helps them detect Earth's magnetic field, thereby showing them which way is north. Some birds may also be able to detect low-level sounds made by ocean waves. Sounds that can provide clues about direction. Perhaps many birds are capable of using more than one navigational technique. If not, 
the birds that use the stars to find their way would be lost on cloudy nights. What are feathers made of? Birds have many different kinds of feathers, each of which performs a different function. Some feathers, the small, soft down used in pillows and winter jackets, are designed to keep the bird warm, others are specifically used for flight. While some feathers are pure decoration, intended to help the bird find a mate. Feathers consist of a shaft in the middle with pairs of branches, called barbs, attached. The surface formed by the barbs is called the vein. On the feathers of some birds, the barbs in turn have smaller branches called barbules. The barbules from one barb connect to those of the barb next to it by little hooks. Making the feather stiffer and stronger. Before the invention of the modern ink pen, people filled the hollow shafts of feathers. Called quills, with ink, and used them as writing instruments. In societies all over the world, people have also used feathers to decorate clothing or hats. Or to make garments worn during important ceremonies. What are feathers made of? Birds have many different kinds of feathers, each of which performs a different function. Some feathers, the small, soft down used in pillows and winter jackets, are designed to keep the bird warm, others are specifically used for flight. While some feathers are pure decoration, intended to help the bird find a mate. Feathers consist of a shaft in the middle with pairs of branches, called barbs, attached. The surface formed by the barbs is called the vein. On the feathers of some birds, the barbs in turn have smaller branches called barbules. The barbules from one barb connect to those of the barb next to it by little hooks. Making the feather stiffer and stronger. Before the invention of the modern ink pen, people filled the hollow shafts of feathers. Called quills, with ink, and used them as writing instruments. In societies all over the world, people have also used feathers to decorate clothing or hats or to make garments worn during important ceremonies. Why are male birds more colorful than female birds? In some species, like the North American cardinal, the male bird has brilliantly colored feathers while the female's feathers are drab and dark. One reason the males have a more colorful appearance is so they can capture the attention of the female bird they wish to mate with. The male's bright colors also come in handy after mating. When he's protecting the nest and sending a clear signal to other males to keep away from his territory. The female's dull colors, on the other hand, help her blend in with the branches surrounding her nest and avoid being seen by enemies. 
If her feathers were bright like the males, she would be easily spotted by predators. And she would have to leave her nest unprotected if attacked. Why are male birds more colorful than female birds? In some species, like the North American cardinal, the male bird has brilliantly colored feathers while the female's feathers are drab and dark. One reason the males have a more colorful appearance is so they can capture the attention of the female bird they wish to mate with. The male's bright colors also come in handy after mating. When he's protecting the nest and sending a clear signal to other males to keep away from his territory. The female's dull colors, on the other hand, help her blend in with the branches surrounding her nest and avoid being seen by enemies. If her feathers were bright like the males, she would be easily spotted by predators. And she would have to leave her nest unprotected if attacked. Will wild birds reject their babies if people touch them? Many people believe that if a person touches a wild baby bird to put it back in the nest, the bird's parents will be able to detect the human scent and will then reject the baby, pushing it right back out of the nest. This widely held belief is simply not true. If a baby bird is found on the ground and appears to be able to fly, leave it alone and trust that it will find its way back to the family nest. If it clearly cannot fly, and you know where its nest is, pick it up gently and place it back in the nest. If the nest can't be found, some experts suggest putting the baby bird in a small basket and hanging it on a nearby bush or tree. The bird's parents will care for it in the basket until it is able to fly. Will wild birds reject their babies if people touch them? Many people believe that if a person touches a wild baby bird to put it back in the nest, the bird's parents will be able to detect the human scent and will then reject the baby, pushing it right back out of the nest. This widely held belief is simply not true. If a baby bird is found on the ground and appears to be able to fly, Leave it alone and trust that it will find its way back to the family nest. If it clearly cannot fly, and you know where its nest is, pick it up gently and place it back in the nest. If the nest can't be found, some experts suggest putting the baby bird in a small basket and hanging it on a nearby bush or tree. The bird's parents will care for it in the basket until it is able to fly. What is the largest bird? The ostrich is the largest living bird, some extinct species were larger. Found primarily in Africa, the male ostrich can grow to be nearly 8 feet, 2.5 meters tall, 
with its neck making up almost half of its height, females are a bit smaller. Ostriches can weigh almost 350 pounds, 159 kilograms. These flightless birds travel in groups and can frequently be found in the company of other grazing animals. People have harvested ostrich feathers for hundreds of years to decorate hats and other items. And in recent years ostrich meat has become more popular. What is the largest bird? The ostrich is the largest living bird, some extinct species were larger. Found primarily in Africa, the male ostrich can grow to be nearly 8 feet, 2.5 meters. Tall, with its neck making up almost half of its height, females are a bit smaller. Ostriches can weigh almost 350 pounds. 159 kilograms. These flightless birds travel in groups and can frequently be found in the company of other grazing animals. People have harvested ostrich feathers for hundreds of years to decorate hats and other items. And in recent years ostrich meat has become more popular. Which bird lays the largest eggs? The largest eggs, not surprisingly, are laid by the largest bird, which is the ostrich. An ostrich egg averages around 6 inches, 150 millimeters in length and around 5 inches, 125 millimeters, in diameter. It weighs about 3 pounds, 1.35 kilograms. A male ostrich mates with several females during one mating season. And all of those females lay their eggs in one large nest, which can contain several dozen eggs at one time. Over the course of the 40 days it takes the eggs to hatch. The male sits on the nest at night, and the females take turns during the day. Which bird lays the largest eggs? The largest eggs, not surprisingly, are laid by the largest bird, which is the ostrich. An ostrich egg averages around 6 inches, 150 millimeters. In length and around 5 inches, 125 millimeters, in diameter. It weighs about 3 pounds, 1.35 kilograms. A male ostrich mates with several females during one mating season. And all of those females lay their eggs in one large nest, which can contain several dozen eggs at one time. Over the course of the 40 days it takes the eggs to hatch. The male sits on the nest at night, and the females take turns during the day. Do ostriches really bury their heads in sand?
This supposed ostrich behavior has been referred to countless times in warning. People not to bury their heads in the sand and ignore their problems. But the fact is that ostriches do not bury their heads in sand when danger approaches. They kick up their heels and run. Sometimes, to avoid being seen by nearby predators. The very tall ostrich will lie down and stretch its neck out on the ground. This behavior may have been spotted and misunderstood by people. Who began the tale of an ostrich burying its head in the sand? Ostriches also occasionally nibble on small pebbles or sand. A behavior that may give an observer the impression that they are trying to burrow into the sand. Do ostriches really bury their heads in sand? This supposed ostrich behavior has been referred to countless times in warning. People not to bury their heads in the sand and ignore their problems. But the fact is that ostriches do not bury their heads in sand when danger approaches. They kick up their heels and run. Sometimes, to avoid being seen by nearby predators. The very tall ostrich will lie down and stretch its neck out on the ground. This behavior may have been spotted and misunderstood by people. Who began the tale of an ostrich burying its head in the sand? Ostriches also occasionally nibble on small pebbles or sand. A behavior that may give an observer the impression that they are trying to burrow into the sand. Which bird has the largest wings? The largest measured wingspan belongs to the wandering albatross. A large seabird that can be seen gliding over southern oceans. When spread, its wings can measure nearly 12 feet, 3.6 meters. Their long, narrow wings allow them to fly great distances with minimal effort. Albatrosses can glide for several hours without flapping their wings once. Their gliding ability helps them save energy. Which comes in handy when they have to fly hundreds of miles in one trip to find food for a just hatched baby. Albatrosses only come to shore for breeding. And they are unusual among birds in that the female only lays one egg each year. Most birds lay several eggs a year. Ducks can lay around 10 eggs at a time, for example. Baby albatrosses require a lot of care from their parents. It can take them almost a year to grow the feathers they need for flying. And during that time the parents must search far and wide to get food for the whole family. Albatrosses eat fish and squid, and sometimes they follow boats, looking for food scraps. At one time sailors believed that killing an albatross brought bad luck. An idea explored in the famous poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, The Rime of the Ancient Mariner. Others ignored that superstition, catching the birds on baited fish hooks for their meat and feathers. Which bird has the largest wings?
The largest measured wingspan belongs to the wandering albatross. A large seabird that can be seen gliding over southern oceans. When spread, its wings can measure nearly 12 feet, 3.6 meters. Their long, narrow wings allow them to fly great distances with minimal effort. Albatrosses can glide for several hours without flapping their wings once. Their gliding ability helps them save energy. Which comes in handy when they have to fly hundreds of miles in one trip to find food for a just hatched baby. Albatrosses only come to shore for breeding. And they are unusual among birds in that the female only lays one egg each year. Most birds lay several eggs a year ducks can lay around 10 eggs at a time, for example. Baby albatrosses require a lot of care from their parents. It can take them almost a year to grow the feathers they need for flying. And during that time the parents must search far and wide to get food for the whole family. Albatrosses eat fish and squid, and sometimes they follow boats, looking for food scraps. At one time sailors believed that killing an albatross brought bad luck. An idea explored in the famous poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Others ignored that superstition, catching the birds on baited fish hooks for their meat and feathers. What are killer bees? Killer bees are the result of a scientific experiment begun in the mid-1950s, when European honeybees and African bees, which are accustomed to hot temperatures, were brought to Brazil and bred with each other in an effort to create a honeybee that would produce honey in hot, tropical climates. The experiment was a big failure because unlike the mild-mannered European honeybee the new Africanized honeybee had an aggressive nature. Quick to attack intruders, the new bees have been responsible for a number of human deaths. The danger of these bees comes from their tendency to attack in swarms. If a person is stung by enough bees at one time, it could trigger a severe allergic reaction. These killer bees have made their way into the southern United States. But the American beekeeping industry is working on ways to correct this experiment gone wrong. Can you figure out the temperature by listening to a cricket chirp? Yes the warmer the night, the faster a cricket sings. This phenomenon is so reliable that a mathematical equation can be used to calculate air temperature. Count the number of cricket chirps made in 13 seconds. And add 40, and you will get the temperature outside, in degrees Fahrenheit. How do birds know when it's time to migrate? Scientists believe that in some species, young migrating birds learn when and how to migrate from the older birds in the flock. Experts have also noted that changes in the temperature and 
amount of daylight seem to trigger a migrating impulse in birds. As the days get shorter and the amount of sunlight decreases in the autumn, migrating birds begin to produce hormones. These hormones cause the birds to store up more fat in their bodies. Fat that can be converted into energy to help sustain them on their long flights. As the time for migrating approaches, birds display signs of restlessness. Some people have even observed such restlessness among captive birds. Which have a steady food supply and little contact with outside temperatures and sunlight. Why do birds migrate? Many species of birds spend part of the year the warmer months in northern regions. And then migrate south when the weather starts to get cold. Birds follow this southward path primarily in search of an abundant, accessible food supply. Birds use up the energy they get from food very quickly, and they need to eat often. So when the ground begins to freeze and food supplies, particularly insects, are harder to find, many birds head south. Birds that spend a lot of time in water ducks and geese, for example have an additional reason to migrate. The northern lakes and ponds where they lie freeze over in the winter. Migrating birds spend the winter months in the warmer, southern climate. And as spring returns to the north, so do migrating birds. Do any lizards live in water? Lizards need to breathe air, so there are no living species that live in water all of the time. Several species of lizards can and do swim. Spending part of their lives in the water looking for various freshwater organisms to eat. Only one species, the marine iguana of the Galapagos Islands, is known to get its food from salty seawater. It eats seaweed and algae, and some marine iguanas have been known to dive underwater in search of food for periods of up to half an hour. As they eat, marine iguanas naturally swallow lots of salt water, but they are able to remove the salt from their bodies because they, like all iguanas, have salt glands between their eyes and nostrils. These glands concentrate and remove the salt, depositing it in the iguana's nostril. The lizard then gets rid of the salt by sneezing. The resulting bit of salt that shoots out of the iguana's nostril is used to scare off potential enemies. What is the smallest lizard? Geckos, sometimes spelled geckos, are the smallest types of lizards. They are only about 1 inch, 3 centimeters, long. Geckos got their name from the frequent chirping and clicking noises they make. Most reptiles don't make any noise at all. They like warm climates, and, unlike many other reptiles, they frequently live peacefully among humans probably because they are harmless. 
they are less threatening because of their small size, and their insect diet is helpful to humans. The tiny, hair-like coverings on their flattened feet make geckos extraordinary climbers. They are able to grip even very smooth surfaces. And they can climb straight up walls and even walk across ceilings. How do boa constrictors kill their prey? Injecting animals with venom is not the only method used by snakes to control their prey. One group of snakes, called the constrictors, do not produce venom but are every bit as deadly to the animals they hunt. The constrictors, including boa constrictors and pythons, use the powerful muscles in their bodies to squeeze the life out of their prey. They coil themselves around the animal they've caught, squeezing until its blood can no longer circulate. Boa constrictors eat mostly birds and mice, and they can grow to be around 14 feet, 4.3 meters, long. The female boa is among the few snakes whose young develop within her body. She gives birth to live snakes, perhaps as many as 50 at one time. Pythons, which live in parts of Asia, Africa and Australia, are among the biggest snakes in the world. With the larger species getting as long as 30 feet, 9 meters. Why are male birds more colorful than female birds? In some species, like the North American cardinal, the male bird has brilliantly colored feathers while the female's feathers are drab and dark. One reason the males have a more colorful appearance is so they can capture the attention of the female bird they wish to mate with. The male's bright colors also come in handy after mating. When he's protecting the nest and sending a clear signal to other males to keep away from his territory. The female's dull colors, on the other hand, help her blend in with the branches surrounding her nest and avoid being seen by enemies. If her feathers were bright like the males, she would be easily spotted by predators. And she would have to leave her nest unprotected if attacked. Are there any poisonous lizards? Two lizards are known to inject venom into their prey, the Gila, pronounced H. Monster and the Mexican beaded lizard. The Gila, found in northern Mexico and the southwestern United States. Produces venom that is secreted into grooves in their teeth. When they bite into their prey, the venom gets into the other animal's blood. Around 20 inches, 50 centimeters, long, Gila monsters eat small mammals and birds as well as eggs. They have been known to bite people, but while their bites may be painful, they rarely cause serious harm to humans. The Mexican beaded lizard, a close relative to the Gila, can be a bit larger around 31 inches, or 80 centimeters. 
It lives throughout much of Mexico and parts of Central America. Both of these lizards, during seasons when food is hard to find, can live for months off fat stored in their tails. Why are crocodiles and alligators such good hunters? One advantage crocodiles and alligators have over their enemies and prey is that they can grow to be fairly large. Alligators can be as big as 19 feet, almost 6 meters, and crocodiles. Considered the largest and heaviest living reptiles, can be slightly bigger. They have huge, crushing jaws and massive powerful tails that help them swim and can be used to thrash their opponents. Perhaps their most useful feature as hunters is the positioning of their eyes and nostrils on the top of their heads. This trait allows alligators and crocodiles to keep most of their bodies submerged in the water. Hidden from view, while they wait for an animal to come to the water's edge for a drink. The water loving reptiles can then snatch their prey. Pulling the animal into the water to drown it before eating it. What is the largest bird? The ostrich is the largest living bird, some extinct species were larger. Found primarily in Africa, the male ostrich can grow to be nearly 8 feet, 2.5 meters tall, with its neck making up almost half of its height, females are a bit smaller. Ostriches can weigh almost 350 pounds. 159 kilograms. These flightless birds travel in groups and can frequently be found in the company of other grazing animals. People have harvested ostrich feathers for hundreds of years to decorate hats and other items. And in recent years, ostrich meat has become more popular. What is a cocoon? A cocoon is an envelope-like structure made of silk that is spun by an immature insect or larva. It is a protective covering in which the larva passes through its inactive pupa stage before it becomes an adult insect. These cocoons are often attached to branches or twigs. Caterpillars are the larvae that eventually change, or metamorphose, into butterflies and moths. Only a few types of butterfly caterpillars spin cocoons. A butterfly's cocoon is called a chrysalis, while the caterpillars of many moths do. The cocoon of the silkworm, caterpillar of the silk moth, is collected and processed and woven into the beautiful cloth we know as silk. How can snakes swallow animals larger than their own bodies? Snakes do not always eat animals whose bodies are wider than their own. 
but they are certainly capable of it. And because they swallow their prey whole without bothering to chew it up first. They need to be equipped with special characteristics for getting food to their stomachs. First of all, snakes have unique jaws. The lower jawbone is only loosely connected to the upper jaw. And the lower jaw is made up of two bones that are connected by an elastic, or stretchy, tissue. So the snake can open its mouth very wide. Several times as big as its own head, accommodating a relatively large animal. Also, the two sides of a snake's jaw move separately from one another. The snake sinks its fangs, which are curved backward, into its prey. It moves first one side of the jaw backward and then the next, gradually pulling the prey into its mouth. It can take a snake 30 minutes to an hour to swallow an animal. During that time, its trachea, or windpipe, gets pushed forward, out of its mouth. So the snake can continue to breathe during the long swallowing process. The snake's flexible ribs then expand to allow the body to widen as the food makes its way to the stomach and intestines. Given that eating is such a time-consuming and body-expanding process, it is perhaps fortunate that a snake doesn't need to eat very often. Snakes may eat once a week or once a month. And some large snakes in captivity have been known to go several months between meals. During colder seasons, snakes are dormant or inactive and can go much longer than usual without eating. Why are some flying insects drawn to lights at night? Scientists aren't exactly sure why this happens. They have noticed that on clear nights, when the moon is visible, fewer insects gravitate to artificial lights. This observation has given rise to a theory, for millions of years. Insects have used the light of the moon, coming from one direction above to guide them during night flight. But artificial lights, which put out rays of illumination in all directions, confuse this ancient navigational system. Flying in a straight line is impossible when an insect is around an artificial light, which causes it to fly in circles. What are feathers made of? Birds have many different kinds of feathers, each of which performs a different function. Some feathers, the small, soft down used in pillows and winter jackets, are designed to keep the bird warm, others are specifically used for flight. While some feathers are pure decoration, intended to help the bird find a mate. Feathers consist of a shaft in the middle with pairs of branches, called barbs, attached. The surface formed by the barbs is called the vein. On the feathers of some birds, the barbs in turn have smaller branches called barbules. The barbules from one barb connect to those of the barb next to it by little hooks. Making the feather stiffer and stronger. 
Before the invention of the modern ink pen, people filled the hollow shafts of feathers. Called quills, with ink, and used them as writing instruments. In societies all over the world, people have also used feathers to decorate clothing or hats. Or to make garments worn during important ceremonies. Will wild birds reject their babies if people touch them? Many people believe that if a person touches a wild baby bird to put it back in the nest, the bird's parents will be able to detect the human scent and will then reject the baby, pushing it right back out of the nest. This widely held belief is simply not true. If a baby bird is found on the ground and appears to be able to fly, Leave it alone and trust that it will find its way back to the family nest. If it clearly cannot fly, and you know where its nest is. Pick it up gently and place it back in the nest. If the nest can't be found. Some experts suggest putting the baby bird in a small basket and hanging it on a nearby bush or tree. The bird's parents will care for it in the basket until it is able to fly. Why do fireflies light up at night? It is believed that fireflies, beetles also known as lightning bugs, Flash signals to one another to show their locations in the dark and to indicate their willingness to mate. Fireflies have organs near the ends of their bodies that convert a special biochemical into flashes of heatless light. This ability of living things to produce their own light is called bioluminescence. Why do snakes always stick out their tongues? Although a snake's forked tongue darting constantly in and out of its mouth can look scary, it is actually quite harmless. Snakes repeatedly stick out their tongues not because they're rude, but because they are using their tongues to gather information. Snakes have an organ located on the roof of their mouths called Jacobson's organ. This organ processes tiny amounts of chemical substances that are picked up by the snake's flicking tongue. Each time the tongue goes out of the snake's mouth, it picks up chemicals from the air. The snake then inserts the tips of its delicate forked tongue into the two openings of Jacobson's organ. Which can analyze the chemicals to tell if a nearby animal is potential food, or perhaps an enemy. Male snakes also use their tongues as part of a courting ritual, that is. The process by which they figure out if a certain female snake is interested in mating with them. The male snake jerks his body around, snapping his tongue in and out. And if the female ignores him, he knows to keep looking for a suitable partner. If she responds favorably, he's found his mate. How is an alligator different from a crocodile?
Alligators and crocodiles share many similarities and are close relatives. Both belonging to the order Crocodilia. Some distinguishing features can help in telling them apart, however. Alligators usually have broader, flatter, rounder snouts than crocodiles. Crocodile snouts are narrow and V-shaped. Both have extremely powerful jaws, but the wider jaw of the alligator has the edge. Another difference can be seen in the way their jaws fit together. In alligators, the upper jaw is wider than the lower jaw, so when their mouths are closed, the upper teeth can be seen outside the mouth, while the lower teeth are almost completely hidden. Crocodiles' upper and lower jaws are about the same width. So when their mouths are closed, their teeth, also visible outside the mouth, interlock. The crocodile's large fourth tooth on the bottom is especially noticeable. Both animals tend to prefer freshwater environments, but crocodiles have a higher tolerance for salt water than alligators because they have salt glands on their tongues that help them get rid of excess salt. Crocodile skin also looks different from alligator skin because crocodiles have small black specks all over their bodies. While alligators have them only around their jaws. These dots are special sensory pits that help the animals. Detect the presence of prey and sense changes in water pressure. Crocodiles are thought to be more aggressive than alligators, and while that is true for some species, there are several different kinds of both animals, and there are many behavioral differences among them. Which bird lays the largest eggs? The largest eggs, not surprisingly, are laid by the largest bird, which is the ostrich. An ostrich egg averages around 6 inches, 150 millimeters. In length and around 5 inches, 125 millimeters, in diameter. It weighs about 3 pounds, 1.35 kilograms. A male ostrich mates with several females during one mating season. And all of those females lay their eggs in one large nest, which can contain several dozen eggs at one time. Over the course of the 40 days it takes the eggs to hatch. The male sits on the nest at night, and the females take turns during the day. How do migrating birds know how to navigate? Twice a year, migrating birds vacate their homes to travel hundreds and sometimes thousands of miles over land and over sea to a new residence. Some migratory birds travel to the same exact place year after year. And some are even so punctual as to arrive at the same time year after year. Do snakes have bones in their bodies? Snakes have such flexible and winding bodies. It seems strange to think that they have bones under those scales. 
Snakes do not have any arms or legs, but they do have bones in their skull, and they have a long backbone. The backbone is made up of vertebrae, plural of vertebra, the segments that make up the spinal column in all vertebrates. And a pair of ribs is attached to each vertebra above the tail section. Therefore, very long snakes have more vertebrae, and more ribs. Than any other kind of animal, some snakes have more than 400 vertebrae, people have 12. The way the vertebrae fit together allows for swiveling flexibility in both side to side and up and down motions. Allowing the snake to move the way it does without straining its skeleton. Which bird has the largest wings? The largest measured wingspan belongs to the wandering albatross. A large seabird that can be seen gliding over southern oceans. When spread, its wings can measure nearly 12 feet, 3.6 meters. Their long, narrow wings allow them to fly great distances with minimal effort. Albatrosses can glide for several hours without flapping their wings once. Their gliding ability helps them save energy. Which comes in handy when they have to fly hundreds of miles in one trip to find food for a just hatched baby. Albatrosses only come to shore for breeding. And they are unusual among birds in that the female only lays one egg each year. Most birds lay several eggs a year ducks can lay around 10 eggs at a time, for example. Baby albatrosses require a lot of care from their parents. It can take them almost a year to grow the feathers they need for flying. And during that time the parents must search far and wide to get food for the whole family. Albatrosses eat fish and squid, and sometimes they follow boats, looking for food scraps. At one time sailors believed that killing an albatross brought bad luck. An idea explored in the famous poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Others ignored that superstition, catching the birds on baited fish hooks for their meat and feathers. Where do insects go in the winter? Most insects survive the winter in an inactive state known as diapause. It is a type of hibernation. In which all body processes slow down and little energy is required for survival. A few types of insects, like the monarch butterfly of North America. Migrate to a warmer place just like many birds to spend the winter returning in the spring. Why do bees, wasps, and other insects sting? An insect's sting is a defensive weapon used when it senses danger. It was developed to keep predators away from it or from its colony in a hive or nest. It is designed to pierce the skin and inject a poison or venom into the predator. If you have the bad luck to be stung by an insect, there are a few things you should do. First, 
move away from the hive or nest if one is nearby. A stinging bee sends out a chemical signal that excites other bees. Second, try to remove the stinger from your skin by scraping it with something hard instead of pulling it. Which could squeeze the attached venom sac, releasing more of the irritating substance into the wound. Put some ice on the sting to ease the swelling and pain. If you develop a lot of swelling, a rash, or, most important, have trouble breathing. See a doctor, because you are having a serious allergic reaction. Why do butterflies and other insects fly from flower to flower? Butterflies and other insects fly from one plant to the next to feed on the sweet nectar and sometimes the pollen located in the interior of flowers. The sugar in nectar supplies insects with the energy they need. And pollen contains protein, fat, vitamins, and minerals. In the process of feeding, Many insects transfer pollen which sticks to their bodies from one plant's flower to another. Pollen, which is a fine powdery grain from a flower's male reproductive organ, must be transferred to the female reproductive organ of a flower for fertilization to take place and seeds to form. How are moths different from butterflies? While moths and butterflies are very similar and belong to the same order of insects. Lepidoptera, there are noticeable differences between them. Butterflies are generally active during the day, and moths are usually nocturnal, or active at night. Butterflies have knobs on the ends of their antennae, while moths do not. Butterflies tend to be more colorful than moths. And moths and butterflies hold their wings differently when at rest, moths lay theirs out flat. Like an airplane, while butterflies hold theirs vertically above their bodies. Which snake is the biggest? It depends on how the snake is measured. Many people believe that the giant, or green, anaconda is the largest overall thickest and heaviest while the reticulated python is the longest. Either way, these are both extremely large snakes. The anaconda, which lives near water in tropical regions of South America, commonly grows to be about 16 feet, 5 meters, long. But these snakes have been known to get as long as 30 feet, 9 meters, and they can weigh several hundred pounds. They capture prey by lying in the water at night, waiting for animals to come to the water's edge for a drink. Anacondas belong to the group of snakes known as constrictors. Meaning they squeeze their prey to death rather than using venom. While they will sometimes capture animals as large as deer when in search of a meal. Anacondas are typically not very aggressive in the wild. 
Pythons are also non-venomous constrictors. The reticulated python, one of about 25 species of pythons, is thought to be the longest snake in the world. It often grows to be about 26 feet, 8 meters, long, though longer specimens have been recorded. The Guinness Book of World Records notes that the longest snake ever measured was a reticulated python that was around 33 feet, 10 meters, long. Pythons frequently live near cities and can often be found by riverbanks. They live in many regions of the world, including Africa, India, Southeastern Asia, and Australia. Unlike anacondas, pythons have a reputation for being vicious. Though they don't usually bother humans unless the humans are bothering them. How do insects make other sounds? Most of the time, insects make noise for mating purposes. Male insects produce sound to attract females, sometimes over long distances. A male insect can make such sounds by rubbing parts of his body together. The grasshopper, for instance, rubs the rough edge of his hind leg against the edge of a forewing. Similarly, the cricket scrapes his forewings together. Other insects have membranes that vibrate, which also produces sound. How do they know how to do that? Scientists have studied migratory patterns of many different species. And they have developed theories as to how birds can find their way, but ultimately, they don't know for sure what techniques birds use. Birds might use the stars and the moon to guide their way, or they may have a sort of internal compass that helps them detect Earth's magnetic field, thereby showing them which way is north. Some birds may also be able to detect low-level sounds made by ocean waves. Sounds that can provide clues about direction. Perhaps many birds are capable of using more than one navigational technique. If not, the birds that use the stars to find their way would be lost on cloudy nights. Why do snakes shed their skins? Snakes grow rapidly when they are young, and they continue to grow throughout their lives. Their skin does not grow along with them, however. So they must shed their outer covering regularly, replacing it with a new, larger skin. Additionally, the scales covering a snake's body occasionally get damaged or wear out. All animals produce new cells to replace old, worn-out parts of their outer covering. For snakes, the replacement process does not happen bit by bit. But all at once, in a process called molding, or shedding. When the new skin is ready, the outer layer begins to loosen. The snake's eyes turn a milky blue color because the skin covering the eye cap has loosened. To help get the molting started, 
the snake may rub its head against a rock. Pulling the skin loose from its head. It then crawls completely out of its old skin. Turning it inside out in the process and revealing its brand new skin. The new skin has the exact same pattern of scales as the old. Snakes shed more when they are young and growing quickly than when they get older. But on average a snake will molt between 2 and 4 times a year. Why do yellow jacket wasps bother picnickers? Yellow jacket wasps only appear at picnics in the late summer and fall. When there is less work for them to do in their colonies. The nectar producing flowers that they usually feed on are almost gone at that. Time of year so they settle for sweet things like soda and other picnic food. How far can birds fly? Some birds go very short distances in their migrations. The blue grouse, for example, lives in the mountains in North America and flies less than a mile down to lower. Warmer altitudes for the winter months. That's one extreme. Another extreme are the long distance flyers like the Arctic terns. These birds hold the distance record for flight, they've been known to fly from their summer home in the Arctic to a winter spot in the Antarctic, covering distances of around 10,000 miles, 16,100 kilometers. And in the spring they go back the other way. The long-tailed Jaeger flies more than 5,000 miles. 8,050 kilometers, in each direction of its migratory flight. And even the tiny barn swallow has been known to cover 6,000 miles, 9,660 kilometers, round trip. Do ostriches really bury their heads in sand? This supposed ostrich behavior has been referred to countless times in warning. People not to bury their heads in the sand and ignore their problems. But the fact is that ostriches do not bury their heads in sand when danger approaches. They kick up their heels and run. Sometimes, to avoid being seen by nearby predators. The very tall ostrich will lie down and stretch its neck out on the ground. This behavior may have been spotted and misunderstood by people. Who began the tale of an ostrich burying its head in the sand? Ostriches also occasionally nibble on small pebbles or sand. A behavior that may give an observer the impression that they are trying to burrow into the sand. Why do bees and other insects buzz? The buzzing sounds that insects make are the beating of their wings. Some insects flap their wings slowly, like the butterfly, 8 to 12 beats per second, and make no sound. 
Others, like the mosquito, beat their wings very fast. At 600 beats per second. The mosquito's buzz sounds more like a high-pitched whine. Which lizard is the biggest? The Komodo dragon, part of the monitor family of lizards, is the largest living lizard. It can grow to be 10 feet, 3 meters, long, and it can weigh up to 300 pounds, 136 kilograms. The Komodo dragon has been known to attack and kill humans. And sometimes it will even eat members of its own species. But generally its diet consists of carrion, which is the flesh of animals that are already dead. Found on Komodo Island in Indonesia, this lizard has been popular with collectors of rare and exotic animals. And because of that the Komodo dragon is nearly extinct. The Komodo dragon is now protected by laws that prohibit people from hunting or capturing it. What is the smallest bird? The smallest living bird is the bee hummingbird, including its beak and tail. This bird measures only about 2 inches, 5.5 centimeters, and weighs about two-thirds of an ounce, 20 grams. The more than 300 species of beautiful, brightly colored hummingbirds live throughout North and South America. They can flap their wings at amazing speeds the smaller species beat their wings. From 60 to 80 times per second and they are the only birds who can fly upside down. The special structure of their wings also enables them to fly backwards, sideways, and straight up and down. Hummingbirds get their food by hovering over plants and inserting their long, thin beaks into flowers to get the nectar, and insects, inside. Some can hover for close to an hour at a time. Like bees and other nectar-eating creatures, hummingbirds help to spread pollen. The dusty grains that allow fertilization in plants. The pollen clings to their feathers when they come in contact with the male parts of a flower and gets deposited in another plant's female parts, thus helping to produce new plants. Because of their unusually small size, often brilliantly colored feathers, and extraordinary methods of flying, hummingbirds are favorites with birdwatchers. What is the smallest bird? The smallest living bird is the bee hummingbird, including its beak and tail. This bird measures only about 2 inches, 5.5 centimeters, and weighs about two-thirds of an ounce, 20 grams. The more than 300 species of beautiful, brightly colored hummingbirds live throughout North and South America. They can flap their wings at amazing speeds the smaller species beat their wings. From 60 to 80 times per second and they are the only birds who can fly upside down. 
the special structure of their wings also enables them to fly backwards, sideways, and straight up and down. Hummingbirds get their food by hovering over plants and inserting their long, thin beaks into flowers to get the nectar, and insects, inside. Some can hover for close to an hour at a time. Like bees and other nectar-eating creatures, hummingbirds help to spread pollen. The dusty grains that allow fertilization in plants. The pollen clings to their feathers when they come in contact with the male parts of a flower and gets deposited in another plant's female parts, thus helping to produce new plants. Because of their unusually small size, often brilliantly colored feathers, and extraordinary methods of flying, hummingbirds are favorites with birdwatchers.